The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benny Hinn Ministries and viewers like you in this area. man of God is with us tonight. Come on, people, let him know he is welcome, welcome, welcome. I really, I tell you, I really, I really made, made a friend today for life. He's my friend for life, and we are, what a great day we've had already, and a great night we're going to have tonight, and all of you, of course, watching, this is your, your day, just put everything aside, and just tune in right now and listen to what God has to say to you because witchcraft in the pews is what we're going to talk about mm -hmm. and that's something everybody wants to hear about. Yes. So please take your seats and let's just begin. First of all, this wonderful man, man of God has a church in North Carolina. Durham, North Carolina. I love that. Mm -hmm. And great influence all throughout the U.S. and the world really. Thank you. And uh, you're, you're on... Uh, a number of networks on television. Yes, yes. So yes. that pe people can see you. Yes, they can see your program. Turn you on and see the program. I'm the uh, uh, host of Rejoice in the Word, which is the flagship show for uh, the Word Network yeah. on uh, Friday nights at uh, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. I should know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my regular television program comes on on Sunday mornings, uh, um, Spiritual Authority. And we deal with some of the things we're going to talk about. Well, tonight. I'm very interested to begin talking about this now. So, Pastor, let's talk about this. I mean, let's just begin. What is witchcraft in the pews? Witchcraft in the pews, and it says, who's sitting next to you? Don't look. <laughs> mm. well, be because, because. Yeah, witchcraft in the pews, who's sitting next to you? Yeah. Because a, a, a witch could be sitting next to you. Oh. We have to first figure out what a witch is. Stop the manipulation, intimidation, and domination in the church. And, so, and there's lots of it. Oh, yeah. Tongue talking. Ah, shut up. Sanctified witches. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hey, <laughs> glory. All that. Witch. Whoa. Tongue talking, he said. Remember that. Well, how do you identify them? Hmm. hmm. Yes, sir. Not by their makeup and hair, that's for sure. No, no, no. God help us, man. <laughs> Let me start off by telling you how I got into this. Please, I want to know. Um, I was raised in Brooklyn, New York. 453 Columbia Street, <laughs> apartment A, B, and C. Anybody from Brooklyn? Oh, yeah, Brooklyn there, there they are. Red Hook Projects, Brooklyn, New York. All right. Back in the 50s, Red Hook Projects was notorious for all kinds of things happening. Time Life magazine did a report on Red Hook projects back in the 50s, so Red Hook is still bad today. Uh, you almost have to ask the question, can any good thing come out of Red Hook? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you saw. <sir. laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> my mom and my dad had nine children together. My father went out of the wedding barn and had 15 other children by six women in Red Hook projects. When I was coming up in Red Hook projects, a preacher by the name of Lester Summerall came to the projects. Oh, yeah. Lester Summerall came and he was passing out food in the yeah. projects. Feed the hungry, yeah. Feed the hungry. Yeah. I jumped on the back of one of his long 18-wheeler trucks and I was stealing boxes of food. He's giving it out for free. I'm stealing food <laughs> so that I can sell it to the people when he leaves. <laughs> he walks over to me. Oh my goodness. He walks over to me, you know, that voice that he had with authority. Yeah. And he stood up tall and, you know, and he walked over and he said these words to me. Young man, there's 20 books on the inside of you and four are bestsellers. That's what he said. 20 books on the inside of you, four are bestsellers. Yeah, I said to myself, he's got to be out of his mind. He's got to be crazy. I can't even read. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't spell. Prophecy really, really is Whoa. what it says it is. Yeah. Prophet see, prophet see, prophet see. Prophecy is a prophet seeing. Yeah. And they see what no one else can see wow. 
wow. about you but God. Yeah. Mm. Whoa. That's what he spoke. My God. I dropped out of school in the ninth grade, second grade reading ability. I learned how to read 17 years ago. I wrote 30, 36 books. Three are bestsellers. This is one of them, which means there's one more bestseller on the inside of yeah, me. Yeah, so good. So. Sometimes it takes 20 years for the word that God spoke to manifest and to materialize. Yes, sir. But by the power of the decree, whatever we decree and declare, and declare and decree, I decree it and declare it, I declare it and decree it, say it, I decree it and declare it, I declare it and decree it, say it, I decree it and declare it, I declare it. And whatever you speak into the atmosphere is going to shape. And what God is doing right now is, uh, is revealing something to you. If you don't see it before you see it, when it manifests, you won't recognize it. He gives you in your dream life a vision of what is going to be like when it manifests. Do not discredit it. Do not discount it by the power of the decree. And God is about to do something in this season that he has never, ever, ever, ever done before. Amen. This is the season where deliverance meets up with the healing ministry. Wow. I've been waiting for this all my life. But back to my story. My grandmother was a witch. She operated in witchcraft, voodoo, obia, Santa Maria, casting of spells, so on and so forth. Uh, I shared with you earlier, the women uh, would have problems with their husbands or they couldn't get pregnant or what have you, and she would conjure up a potion or a spell or what have you. The men, when they were bad, she would have these little men. They'd write the names on the men and bury them in flower pots. She had flower pots all over the house. My God. She would give them potions to drink, th different things to bathe in, and, and so on and so forth like that. Um, when I was young coming up, she hated me. I don't know why, but Grandma Bloomer didn't like her grandson. And I couldn't tie my shoes. She'd make me stretch my hands out and hit me on the tips of my fingers with drumsticks. Whoa. And it just, just abusing me. And I realized later on, it was because she recognized the anointing of God that's on amen, the inside. Amen, amen, Pastor. When you are anointed, people will hate you for the anointing that is on your life. Yeah. Lean on your neighbor and say, I'm anointed. Yeah. Lean on the other neighbor and said, can't you feel it? <laughs> Lean forward and said, I got it just like that. Yeah. When you are anointed, people will hate you for your anointed. Uh-huh. But just say to somebody, I'm anointed, I'm anointed, I'm anointed, I'm anointed. Yeah. Wow. Woo. I'm anointed. Amen. And so, as a young person coming up, when my grandmother would come to my house, sometimes my mother would say, was grandma here last night? And my sister would say, yeah. And I said, why well, do you know? I said, because every time grandma comes, George wets the bed. I would be sleeping. When she comes, the spirit, that her, the spirit of intimidation was so strong on her that I would, it would manifest by me oh my losing God. my water. Wow. 13, 14 years old, I was losing my water if grandma Bloomer would show up. That's the power of witchcraft that was on her. I remember... When my mother came and told me, she said, your grandmother passed away. My, she was just so tough. She said, your grandmother passed away. And I stood there and I said. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that, was, that was the type of spirit wow. she walked in. Now, there are several of you that are in this room right now. Something is turning within your spirit because the Lord is revealing to you right this moment that spirit of intimidation where you come in contact with people who the whole spirit about them is to intimidate. Yeah. I call it a nice, nasty spirit. They say, how you doing? But you, you feel something nasty. <laughs> Lean on your neighbor and say, that's nice, nasty. <laughs> nice, nasty is not nice. Uh -huh. Witchcraft. Witchcraft is intimidation, manipulation, and domination. If you're going to be, if you have to work voodoo, you have to be a practicing practitioner of the occult. You'd have to know something about spell casting and numerology and so on and so forth. If you're going to deal with divination, you would have to know about uh, astronomy and, 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 and the mixing of potions and the seasons and the times. But to be a witch, all you have to do is seek to control another person's will, to turn their will to yours, and the yeah. spirit behind that is witchcraft. witchcraft. And that spirit has to be broken in the local church. Okay, let's talk about the local church. Now, how does that happen? What kind of, what kind of things do we look for? 
Well, many of the witches inside the church starts off in the intercessory prayer group. So they, you, ask them, you ask an intercessor, what do you do? And the intercessor says, I pray. And I said, pray for what? I pray for people. Well, now we're in trouble if the intercessors are praying for people. Because intercessors don't pray for people. Yeah. Inter the seed or intercession, intercede, intercession. If you're an intercessor or you're entering the seed, you don't pray for people. You pray as the person, not for the person. You actually become who the person is to carry that thing. That's it. That's, That's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible teaches. Yeah. Jesus is our intercessor. intercessor. Yeah. We are seated with him in heavenly places. We're standing here and there at the same time. In fact, this is just an embassy down there, down here. We're actually in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I that's like what this. the Bible this is an teaches. Embassy. We're in the embassy. We're in the embassy. I love this. That's, 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 that's what's taking place. Yeah. Jesus died for our sins. Right? Yeah. Okay. And he died for our sins where? On the cross. On the cross. Did he die for our sins on the cross or did he take our sins to the cross? We could argue that all day long. But if we look at scripture, the scripture says this. He was wounded for our transgressions. Yep. Stop. He was bruised for our iniquities. Stop. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Stop. And by his stripes we were healed. So where was he wounded at? During the trial. Where was he bruised? During the trial. Where was the, when was the stripes put on his back? When they hit him with the cat and nine tail. When he went to the cross, the cross is a manifestation of a work that is already done. It's the huge production. If you don't see it before you see it, when it manifests, you won't recognize it. You won't recognize it. Mm. Every single person who will ever be healed, Pastor Benny, the world over, it already happened in glory. Amen. When you lead us into worship, you make connection from the embassy to the heavens Amen. you walk in the realm of the spirit to see what is already done Amen. and then you call it to manifest in the realm of the earth oh amen 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 that's what happens oh i love that whatsoever things we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever things we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven loosen and binding it already took place jesus is the lamb that was slain before, before the, foundation. the foundation of the world yep much of what we're dealing with in the realm of the earth has already been fought in the heavenly realm if you don't see it before you see it, when it manifests, you won't recognize it. God is not a God that deals with things that are happening to us in our middle process. He is Alpha and Omega, Lord. beginning Listen and this. end, awesome. first and last, author and finisher of our faith. You're already completed in him and your, 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 your personal will can break that covenant. Don't allow it to happen. He knows who you are. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. Let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Mm. Iniquity, willful deviations from what we know to be the truth of God's word. To commit iniquity, you almost have to be, you have to be saved. It's the sins of the saints. Let every man that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yeah. For in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself, that's why we're here tonight, to purge ourselves from dishonorable vessels that have gripped and caught our uh, attention. God wants to set us free from those dishonorable vessels yeah. so that we can walk and live in the freedom and the liberty of the Holy Spirit. And witchcraft is Satan's way of clouding the true vision of God in the lives of God's people. God's people are wonderful. They're sweet and they're kind till they meet up with the witches in the pews. Oh, and now, those witches in the pews, what's their aim? What's their purpose? What are they after? They're agents of the enemy, and their aim and their purpose is to kill you and me. Their whole purpose is to stop the man of God. Not the minister of the man of God, but the man himself. The man himself. To silence him. Yeah, to silence him. Now, you must be silenced. These people in this room have faith. I have faith. The question is, where does our faith come from? What people say, well, my faith comes, I got great faith in God. My faith comes because I read the word of God. Well, they're not telling you the truth. They know they're not telling you the truth. They don't want to give you the credit that is due to you, the honor that is due to you. 
the scripture puts it this way. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without the preacher? How can he preach except he is sent? That word there is equipped. So the faith of God's people comes to them through the preacher. God sends it down from heaven through the embassy to the people. The enemy now wants to shut you down. Wants to shut you down. For if he shuts you down, he shuts the faith of the people down. God wants, God wants the people not only to have faith in him, but he wants the people to have faith in you. Blessed is he who comes in the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. So the enemy wants to discredit us to stop them yeah. from believing in God. And you know what the church is doing? They're falling for it. They're falling for it. They don't pray and seek the face of God like they used to. They're falling for it. When the enemy comes after us with his fiery darts, God teaches us the matrix. How to... <laughs> and he slows it down enough so that we can see where it's coming from. But the saints are jumping right in front of it, being knocked down by words from the enemy about a person who God has divinely placed and in And words life. can kill and destroy, it will. not only build. It, it will. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. That's a lie. Of course it's a lie. Words will do more than sticks and stones will ever do. More than sticks and stones ever do. All a person has to do, all you have to do is open up yourself to a negative word against you if you have a pure heart and your heart is pure. But how do we break those words? How do we stop those words? One of the ways to stop the words is by not hearing it. We have to situate ourselves around people who understand us and understand that pastor doesn't need to hear that. I'm not even going to let that come close to him. Yeah, that's it. He doesn't need to then hear it. Then repeat it. it. Right. Some of them repeat it. Just well, they repeat it and now they, now they tweet it. Oh, Thumbs God. gone wild. Yeah. <laughs> You're exactly right. That's, that, 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 that's, that's, that's the, and no one wants to talk about it. So we continue to do fake ministry. Fake ministry, fake ministry, fake ministry. And uh, the saints now have become, by default and, and, and by trusting and not studying the word, they've become gifted, skillful liars, passing on things as doctrines that were never the word of God. And how do we correct it? By giving them the word of God. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 says, A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Ask the average Pentecostal person that. You know what they think that is? It means that women shouldn't wear pants. Any woman praying or prophesying with a head uncovered dishonoreth the head. You know what they think that means? Put on a prayer dolly. Have, a, have your head covered with a hat. Let the woman keep silent in the church for she's not permitted to speak. But ask her husband when she get home. You know what that means to them? That means that women are not allowed to preach. We have taken the word because much of what we believe, somebody got it from somebody, they got it from somebody, they got it from somebody that couldn't read. <laughs> and then I'm passing it on down from to the us. Word. How true. It's the truth. <laughs> yes. And we believe stuff that is just not so. And that's why the enemy. Well, because can of tradition, I mean, it becomes. Something that you just hear and hear and hear and you think it's truth. Yes. You know, did you ever hear, did you ever hear this thing that, um, well, I'll say something in, 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 in audience, you, you, you finish what I say. Um, my baloney has a first name. All right. Well, of course, for the ones that can spell can go with it, but the other ones that can't, they have, yeah, but they got the melody. Kentucky Fried Chicken is... Kentucky Fried Chicken is finger licking. Campbell's Chicken Soup is. That has not been on television in 30 years. But they all remember it. But they remember it. If you, if you. Whoa, 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 whoa. My goodness gracious. Where'd that come from? Okay. Wow. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam. I'm from Israel. I have no clue what to do it. <laughs> what is that? That's what? Sanford and Son. What grandmama say? 
don't cut that mole off your neck because if you do what? You're going to bleed to death. Now, you ain't going to bleed to death if you cut a mole off your neck. But we heard that so much that when the mole gets hardened and getting ready to fall off, we got a Band-Aid holding it there because we don't want to bleed to death. <laughs> Faith cometh by hearing oh, how true and by is. hearing and by hearing and by hearing. We don't even have to do the spiritual side of it. Faith cometh by hearing. If a person hears something seven to ten times, they begin to believe it. When you Whoa. go into the shopping mall to shop, the music that is playing through the, through the systems is, is not the regular music. It's gone to a lab, and there are subliminal messages wrapped up in the music that says, buy, 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 buy. Now you are using your light bill money to buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> that you don't need. That you already bought last week. Yeah, exactly. Get home and say, I got the same shoes already. It, and that's what is happening to us. And we have got to do what Jesus did. And the Bible says that Jesus used that same principle. He went into the temple each Sabbath as it was custom and opened up the same scripture and ministered to the people. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for it has anointed me. For he never went to another message. He understood the power of recapitulation. Whoa. Speaking that thing over and over and over again until it became a part of who you were. And then he left the temple and went into the streets and performed miracles. Stretch forth thy hand and pull the hand of the man who had the But in the temple, recapitulation. That's what we got to do. And that's what we got to do. Now listen, we're almost out of time. Isn't it good? Yeah. Wow. Let's give him a big God bless you. Come on, go, go, go. Listen, this book is, wow. Ministers who use intimidation and fear. Preachers, pastors. pastors if you leave this church. You're going to be cursed. Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard that. So now you have people who are afraid to. Well, I went to a church in Canada where the pastor's wife came up to me and she said, you cannot go to Catherine Kuhlman. We have it all here. Try to control where I would go to. See the power of God. I said, forget it, lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went anyways. I didn't listen to her. Boy, she was one of those brother like you had on this witch's thing. She was strong spirits. Yeah. Strong spirits. They're weird. Those yes. people are weird. Controlling powers in family. What do you mean about families? Like yeah, your, 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 your home family where someone inside the family will control the entire family. Yeah. Family reunions. Some of us hate to go to family reunions because we know that Aunt Elsie going to be there. <laughs> and Aunt Elsie sits over in the corner and talks about everybody. And everybody tries to live up to Aunt Elsie's standard. Manipulative media business techniques. Yeah. Talk about that a minute. The, the, the manipulation of, of, of the media. Do you know that Walter Conkright is, was Walter Conkright? He's gone. And yeah, something. I think he is, yeah. Wallace is gone. All these guys are gone. Those were the champions of news. Now... There's no more newscasters on. They're only opinionless. People who shape your thinking, tell you what to think while they're talking to you. Manipulating the minds oh, of true. people. Distraction com distractions coming from Satan. What distraction? We know that, but Satan, what do you mean? Satan sends natural occurrences to frustrate you spiritually to get you to abort your spiritual destiny. Well, Once say God, that again. Say Satan that again. sends natural occurrences to frustrate you spiritually, to get you to abort your spiritual destiny. The minute God is about to do something, if, if you receive a word tonight that the Lord is going to bless you financially, the minute that word goes forth, a demon manifests and stands in front of the word that was spoken over your life. And that demon will manifest natural occurrences to frustrate you, to get you off of your focus so that what God spoke won't come to pass. But I want you to know this. Accusations and criticisms are the final stage before spiritual promotion. You can always tell how blessed you're going to be tomorrow by how much hell you're going through right now. Whoa! If wow. you're going through a season of turmoil in your life, that's God announcing to you, tomorrow's going to be pretty, pretty good. Lift your hand and say, tomorrow will be good. Tomorrow will be good. All right, now listen. You can get this book by calling the number on the screen for a gift of $30. And for those who will call, you'll also get free, scared to be delivered from what I am bound by. What's in this? What would I do if God actually set me free? 
Lady was living with a man for many, many years and got set free by the power of God. She needed to leave this man. He didn't want to marry her, make her, make her an a, a, a honest woman. But she had no income, no way. So she was afraid yeah. to be delivered from what she was bound by. Not having enough faith to trust God that the God that saved her will also cover her. And you show, her, and you show them how. I show free. them how to be free from stuff that has you bound that you're afraid to get delivered from. Wow. That's okay. my own life. Amen. That's your own life. It's my own life. Yeah. You've gone through mm -hmm. all this. Several times. <laughs> call, call the number. And get, isn't he fascinating? Get this book. Bishop Bloomer, George Bloomer. I love you. And love you, too. Good, you and I, buddies forever. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, did you, did you see that? Yeah. Okay, let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Love you. Bye-bye. See you again. That was awesome. Pastor Benny Hinn is committed to taking the gospel across America and to the nations through many avenues, including This Is Your Day. Please consider sowing a significant seed today to ensure that this broadcast will continue to be seen in your area on this station, building your faith and enriching your walk with the Lord. Call now. And for any gift, Pastor Benny will send you his teaching on CD titled Five Keys to Total Recovery, which will give you the tools to take back what the devil has stolen from your life. And for a gift of $30, you can request Bishop George Bloomer's fascinating book, Witchcraft in the Pews. When you call today to order the book, you'll receive as a free bonus the DVD teaching Scared to be Delivered from What I Am Bound By. Thank you for your prayers and generous support for Pastor Benny and this ministry as he proclaims the saving, healing, and life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and suffering world. You are making a difference for the kingdom of God. Pastor Benny Hinn's next Miracle Crusade will be in New York City at the United Palace on May 24th and 25th with services at 7 p.m. on Thursday and 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Friday. And on Saturday, May 26th at 7 p.m., he'll conduct one great miracle service at the Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland. In June, Pastor Benny will be in Oklahoma City for a miracle service at Templo de Alabanza on Wednesday the 6th at 7 p.m., followed by a miracle crusade on the 7th, 8th, and 9th in Kansas City, Missouri at the Harvest Church International. Then he'll visit Fort Worth, Texas for a miracle service at Calvary Cathedral International at 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, June 10th. Pastor Benny will also travel to Louisville, Kentucky for two life-changing miracle services at Evangel World Prayer Center on Wednesday and Thursday, June 20th and 21st before continuing to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to hold a miracle crusade at Christian Faith Fellowship Church on Friday and Saturday, June 22nd and 23rd. And Pastor Benny invites you to join him on a life-changing tour of the Holy Land November 7th through 15th. Experience the sights and sounds of Israel as you walk where Jesus walked in Jerusalem and Galilee. You can call today to request a brochure or download one from the ministry website. For information on all of Pastor Benny's crusades and services around the world, call now or visit the ministry website.